everybody and welcome to the Rob Wanchini Big Bedtime Read. I know you've been super busy today writing your own stories and it's going to be soon time to share them with your grown-ups. But first of all, we're going to listen to the Rob Boncini Big Bedtime Story by Mr Goodman. So grab a blanket, make yourself comfy and snuggle up. Thank you everybody. Welcome to the Rodborn Big Bedtime Story, everybody. This one is called The Tiger in the Playground. It all started when Mr B arrived to open the school gate. He yawned <sighs> as he put the key in the lock of the gate. The sky was still an inky black. As he strolled through the gate, something in the corner of the playground caught his eye. Something large, something stripy, and something that had definitely not been there last night when he locked up. He took a deep breath and crept closer. What was that? He froze and rubbed his eyes. Surely it couldn't be. In the corner of the playground stood an enormous, fearsome and very real tiger. Its fur moved softly in the breeze and the moonlight glimmered off its razor sharp teeth while it gently licked its paws. Mr Beast's hair stood on end and his knees started to wobble as he slowly backed out of the gate. With trembling fingers, he fished his phone from his pocket and dialed a number. Miss Davis, we have a problem. A big problem. Ten minutes later, cars roared into the playground and teachers leapt out. Don't worry, everybody. I'm always prepared, said Miss Davis. I have an outfit for every occasion. She started digging around in the back of her car. A small crowd who had, gather, who had gathered could see clothes being flung over her shoulder from the boot. Aha! She suddenly exclaimed, just what I was after. She emerged with a large black bag and headed for the staff room. She soon appeared wearing the most magnificent tiger, ta tiger tamer's outfit, complete with a beautiful silk top hat and a whip. She strode through the gate and over to where the tiger was still licking his paws. It paused and looked up suspiciously at Miss Davis. Right, up you get tiger, she said firmly and cracked her whip. The tiger stood, stretched and padded over to the brave head teacher. Now, off you go, she said sternly in her best at teacher voice. Before she could blink, the huge beast casually reached out, took the whip from in his jaws and snap, broke it in two. Miss Davis slowly backed into the car park. Time for plan B, she said quietly. Don't worry, I've got this, said Miss Harris. All behaviour is communication. We simply have to reason with this beautiful creature. She shrugged on her coat, took a deep breath and headed over to the tiger. The crowd watched, awestruck, as the heroic deputy head crouched in front of the beast. The key is to get on their eye level, they heard her mutter. Soon, the crowd could see her talking calmly and very reasonably to the tiger. There was a pause and the crowd held its collective breath. The tiger opened its jaws and roared, spraying Miss Harris with a rather large volume of tiger drool. She too slowly backed into the car park. Plan C, she said in a slightly trembly voice. Right, said Miss O'Driscoll, time to get hands on. The crowd gaped as she vaulted over the gate and sprinted towards the tiger. They gasped as she leapt through the air and in one fluid movement, grasped the tiger's mane and swung herself onto its back. I was wanted to try that, she exclaimed. This is nothing compared to wrangling those nursery children. There was a moment of stillness and it seemed like it had worked. Then the tiger gave the most tremendous buck and flicked Miss O'Driscoll high into the air. She sailed across the playground and landed with a bump on the roof, looking slightly dazed, but rather invigorated. What a ride, she said. What now? Meanwhile, the children of Robborn had been watching the events from home using the bird camera. They decided it was time for them to act. They had a huge teams meeting and came up with a plan. The teachers stood with their nose pressed against the fence. What would they do? 
Would they ever get back to their cosy staff room again? What about all those uneaten biscuits and all that undrunk tea? Suddenly, Miss O'Driscoll felt a tap on her shoulder. It was the head boy and head girl, and they looked like they had a plan. Miss, the head girl cleared her throat nervously. Miss Davis, the children have got together and, well, we have an idea. Miss Davis turned to look at them and asked them to tell her more. We rather like the tiger, said the boy. In fact, we think he's awesome. Instead of getting rid of him, why don't we just build him a new home on the field? Just imagine it. We'd be the only school in the world to have their very own tiger. The teachers looked at them, each other, and their worried expressions soon became eager grins. It's genius, said Miss Davis. Gather the children, you two. Let's get building. Everyone soon arrived. Parents appeared carrying tools and wood. They constructed a huge fence on the field and filled it with all sorts of things that tigers like. A place to cl climb, trees to lie under, and even its very own tiger trim trail. It was Mr Sykes that volunteered for the risky task of luring the tiger down to the field. He popped on his best running shoes, took the chicken that he was planning to cook for Mrs Sykes's dinner, did some stretches and stood in front of the tiger. As soon as the tiger caught a whiff of the chicken, he jumped up and the race was on. Mr Sykes took off like a rocket, whoosh, through the playground, down the alley and onto the field. He flung the chicken into the newly constructed tiger enclosure. The tiger pounced on the chicken and Mr Sykes swung the gate closed behind him, wiping the sweat from his brow. Whew! He panted. Now I just need to think about what I'm going to tell Mrs Sykes about her tea. The tiger padded around his new home with a rather pleased expression on his face. He leapt up onto one of the platforms with the chicken in his mouth and settled down for a rest. Finally, he thought, a bit of peace and quiet. And that is how Robborn Cheney became the only school in Swindon, let alone the world, with their very own pet tiger. I hope you enjoyed the story, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed World Book Day. I'm sure your parents loved hearing all those stories you wrote today. Well done for all the brilliant work and have a lovely evening. Night night, everyone.